So thank you, sir. It's like a uh, recording is started. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, good. Good evening to one and all. Uh, welcome to uh, new year, a uh, new month, and uh, first activity for Comsa uh, Bangalore. And uh, last year, uh, if you have seen our, uh, if you have followed our activities, um, we have done variety of. Uh, um, activities like uh, talks, workshops, um, and uh, uh, various other non-technical sessions uh, like uh, paper writing or uh, research methodology, like that, the variety of topics, both for student community as well as for industrial professionals. We are, um, we are lucky enough to have participants from both, members from both the academia as well as from industry. And uh, that gives us the strength for the Comsoc Bangalore, that we are able to uh, learn uh, from both sides. And at the same time, we are also uh, able to teach others on whatever we know. And uh, having started on strong note with the last year's performance, we would like to uh, do the same thing this year. Of course, with uh, all the support from you, uh, we need uh, more members to join our activities and more speakers to give talks and more students to uh, learn, uh, attend the sessions and then learn from us, right? So with that, uh, um, uh, with that note, I'm hoping this year we are uh, talking on, uh, starting on this particular topic on satellite IoT systems by Mr. Sunil from uh, Sankhya Labs. And uh, uh, please join us in all the sessions and uh, get benefited. What we will do is, Chengapa uh, sir, I request you post the uh, post, uh, link for our um, the last newsletter. Okay, uh, all right. So Let that we can go through the various activities that we have uh, done last year. And uh, we also have uh, saved most of the video recordings in our YouTube channel. Uh, we will also uh, give you that uh, link for the YouTube channel. Please go through the previous lectures. And uh, there's a lot of interesting talks. In fact, uh, there is a 5G uh, series talk by um, Dr. Shatarishi on from basics to the advanced. So those are all very useful for students as well as for uh, aspiring professionals. So I encourage you to go through uh, our newsletter to look at what are the activities that we have done. And many of them are video recorded and then saved in our, in our YouTube channel. Please. Uh, please uh, subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel as well uh, to get notification on the uh, video recordings and other activities that we uh, store up there, save up there. Okay, with that, at the short note, uh, uh, I hand over the podium to Anindya to introduce the speaker. And uh, before uh, we start, please. Uh, uh, give your feedback at the end after um, uh, attending your talk, and you can also post your questions, and we'll answer those questions at the end. Thank you. Over to you, Anindya. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ganeshan. Uh, it's a you know pleasure having everybody today. And uh, yeah, let me introduce uh, Mr. Sunil HR. So Mr. Sunil HR is the VP Technology and Solutions at Sankhya Labs with uh, you know roughly 20, more than 23 years of experience. Uh, he has a strong domain knowledge in satellite communication space, having worked for uh, you know, more than eight plus year, uh, eight years. He has been instrumental in the development and deployment of uh, satellite IoT networks, especially for Indian railways for real time tracking of locomotives. And you know, some, we are going to we are very fortunate to hear from him today, uh, his insights and his experiences. He holds several patents in the domain of uh, digital communication uh, systems. He is a BE graduate from the Mysore University and also holds a master's degree from the Manipal Academy of Higher Education. And his uh, prior experience uh, has been with G Medical and Genesis before Sankhya Lab. So I would like to welcome Mr. Sunil, uh, you know, to take over and uh, deliver the talk. Uh, welcome, Mr. Sunil. Yeah, thank you, Anindya. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ganeshan. Uh, it's a privilege to be part of uh, IEEE Comsoc for uh, this particular event. So I will share my thoughts. Uh, maybe it's not actually like uh, a top of the line uh, presentation, but I would like to say that actually I will try and give you some kind of a heads up on what exactly is the industry headed towards uh, in terms of satellite IoT. 
So just let me share the screen. Uh, you are able to see the see screen? Yes. Okay. So, so IoT is not something which is new for everyone, right? I think everyone starting from wearing a smartwatch to actually having devices within houses which are connected to the internet. So IoT is something which has become as common as actually just having your cell phone in your hand, right? So it's an it of late it is an omnipresent thing so wherever you look at you have uh, an iot device actually visible and uh, streaming out data wherein actually it's getting streamed out over the internet to be visualizable on any of your either a computer or a phone or whatever it is so iot is basically what we are saying is it's actually like there are two things to an iot right iot as such in terms of things itself and then IoT as in terms of network. So here I will be uh, focusing on more uh, telling in terms of the network what we are actually rather than just focusing on the device side of things. Because uh, device I'm sure pretty much uh, everyone would have already seen felt uh, IoT uh, stuff actually. So just a broad definition or a generic definition what goes as far as an IoT is concerned. It describes the network of devices that are embedded with sensors, softwares, and things like that, uh, which actually connect uh, uh, to a central system in order to exchange data, right? So essentially making the data from those sensors and things like that available for actually view on the internet so that it can be analyzed, deciphered, and uh, made it uh, more presentable. So some of the applications of the um, IoT systems are actually just uh, a brief things like the fishing boats in deep sea, uh, which is a very, very practical application that Sankhya is also working on. Uh, trains traveling across the country wherein we have had our deployments, connected vehicles on the road, giving out data in terms of the speed. If at all there is any emergency that the vehicle actually is, uh, gets into being able to air such kind of a data. And these so agriculture is one of the very, very pioneering things actually that's happening in the IoT space. So when we talk about IoT, generally uh, what happens is the terrestrial IoT is what actually uh, comes into mind first, right? So terrestrial IoT is uh, something which is very, very prevalent in use today. So what almost any kind of an IoT device that you see today actually uh, is a terrestrial IoT. Right. So you see uh, send like uh, off -lay, things like uh, water meters and thing, water meters actually being connected or uh, uh, like uh, there are certain uh, devices which are now talking to your uh, Internet or your home Wi-Fi systems. Maybe your TV itself is a smart TV actually talking over the Wi-Fi. That also is a kind of an IoT. And all these things are actually terrestrial IoT in the sense they are backed, they're connected to the internet via gateways which are backed by the terrestrial connectivity. So here in this particular scenario, there has been a lot of investments that have gone in, uh, technology uh, updations have happened and things like that. And the reason, like because of that, we see that actually uh, the edge devices have become really low power cost effective solutions but one of the main uh, drawbacks that actually we see in the terrestrial iot systems is they are actually limited coverage so basically they uh, cover from a few square meters to a few square kilometers kind of a range few square kilometers of course there's a lot of claim on being a few square kilometers but definitely uh, that's a challenge uh, on a few square square kilometers as well and uh, that's also one of the reasons why I said the high density IoT devices. That means that if I have to have a massive IoT deployment, that means in a small area uh, of coverage of the device, if I were to uh, put across a network with uh, a few tens of thousands of devices, uh, there are potentially deployment challenges there. So some of the popular connectivity solutions that most of you might have already uh, had a look at uh, are based on things like NB IoT, uh, which is actually an uh, LTE-based uh, uh, connectivity solution. 
you have wi-fi and bt these are also some of the pop very popularly used uh, terrestrial iot solutions so being low cost low power and things like that these are actually enabling lot of uh, low cost uh, modules itself uh, uh, which are actually being uh, created out there and then uh, subsequently we also have seen some lot of proprietary waveforms uh, also in the terrestrial iot space so essentially things like lora sigfox there is also a new one called uh, mioty which is also like uh, also a academic as well as a uh, what do you call industrial uh, mix actually there so as you see like lora is actually standing for long range wireless so this is uh, one of the most prevalent even compared to mpiot wifi uh, bt devices lora is something which has actually made a very very uh, big mark as far as uh, industrial iots and all those things are concerned so what what does actually form a network so as i said my focus will be to try and say not just on the device part but also touch upon the network part of things so as you can see when we are saying about a terrestrial like an iot network basically at one end you basically have your devices which is also referred to as end nodes so they basically are including a sensor and your devices put together which forms the end nodes and these end nodes are actually what is transmitting and receiving also uh, from what is known as a concentrator or the gateway so these gateways are actually connected these these through these gateways are actually the devices are backboned onto the internet so at the internet place where actually the data is being beamed into uh, so you basically have your network servers Uh, which are potentially compute storage and control systems that you will have as part of your network server and uh, further uh, you also have your application servers so these application servers uh, are the end end uh, this thing from where actually a uh, lot of uh, ai level of processing or whatever is required is done on these particular servers in order to actually uh, make data from the devices uh, more presentable to the user so this is what actually a terrestrial iot network uh, comprises of as different elements of course uh, as you see like lot of uh, talk in terms of actually how do you enable uh, uh, encryption because devices are actually transmitting data out to the internet so some of these are some of the other aspects uh, which uh, are actually in lot of focus as far as uh, iot networks are concerned so then is uh, like uh, so terrestrial iot devices were actually backed by terrestrial connectivity so now uh, the new thing is actually satellite iots right so the satellite iots the main uh, thing being that actually they are devices and when i say devices and or systems why i say that is the devices themselves could be connected to the internet via gateways or it could be a network of devices connected to the internet via gateways so they are backed by the satellite connectivity so one of the primary advantages that we see uh, when we look at satellite iot systems is that uh, they provide a very very large coverage area right so of course i will just get you introdu introduced to some of the satellite systems as we go but like it's uh, pretty much uh, like it's like the aperture of your camera right so now you are having a view uh, your view of uh, uh, coverage is uh, above the surface of the earth so you are actually seeing much much larger area even from a tiny satellite that way so that way you are actually able to address a larger coverage area if you are looking at a satellite iot kind of solutions so one of the most desirable features of actually a satellite iot system is satellite i i should say satellite iot device is that it should be low low power and it should be a cost effective solution because that's what actually the terrestrial iot systems has uh, kind of given us till date right so anyone if if at all any time we talk about an iot uh, everyone looks at it as an low power and a very cost effective solution 
so that's the ideal place everyone wants to be uh, but uh, as i said i just put a highlighted mark there telling that getting there kind of a thing uh, there are a lot of things in terms of technologies and things like that uh, which are in fact helping uh, to introduce a lot of low power and very cost effective solutions uh, in terms of satellite iot as well and uh, satellite iot systems could be a half or a full duplex system choices in case of terrestrial systems uh, more often than not they are actually half duplex systems so in ca case of satellite you could potentially build a half or a full duplex system also and uh, terrestrial iot why exactly like one of the other things is actually the uh, ground infrastructure element now when we compare uh, terrestrial iot's with reference to the satellite iot's as i said terrestrial iot's cover areas uh, from a few square meters to a few square kilometers which means that larger the area of coverage that i need i need much more ground infrastructure elements to be done so that way for a, like it's like uh, it's basically like our uh, cellular infrastructure right so in a dense urban environment uh, we have cell cellular infrastructure going almost every uh, square kilometer or so so iot devices even on terrestrial front tend to have a much larger coverage uh, primarily because uh, we are talking about low bandwidth communication uh, things so that way you can potentially have uh, a few uh, more, much more than a square kilometer kind of an coverage area even then uh, if you look at uh, wanting to look at uh, agriculture for an iot so these are already like acres and acres of uh, land that needs to be networked with sensors and all so under such such situations if you were to actually uh, look at the ground infrastructure part you need much more uh, much like a lot of ground infrastructure elements needs to go in if you want to uh, have a large coverage area on terrestrial iot's in terms of satellite iot's that's actually an advantage right the coverage area of the satellite defines how much of ground infra like whether you require one ground infrastructure to cover the entire space uh, whatever is the coverage of the satellite uh, that's actually one of the advantages that we see on the satellite iot's some of the other uh, parts which is also a kind of disadvantage is that uh, they are like satellite uh, bandwidths are extremely expensive right uh, i when we i will talk about this part a little later in the slides also so just as a basis yeah the satellite bandwidths are expensive uh, and nonetheless an iot device whether it transmits small amount of data or large amount of data they end up eating some bandwidth uh, which means that actually your recurring expenses on the satellite iot becomes high so the uh, if you compare it with the terrestrial iot in terms of the bandwidth cost things like lora and all op uh, operate on some of the license free bands which actually make it uh, no cost as far as the bandwidths are concerned of course lte lte based mb iot and all Uh, will have a recurring expense but there are also availability of uh, equipments in devices in satellite yeah, sorry terrestrial iot space which actually come to you as in uh, free costing uh, bandwidths right uh, now in terms of massive iot deployments uh, the challenges for satellite iot's are multifold now right the thing is actually one is the coverage areas have increased so so much that actually uh, you need to address much more number of devices than what actually a satellite uh, iot system actually uh, has to look at so that's another uh, problem area for uh, massive deployments whether it is uh, satellite or whether it is terrestrial so before getting into uh, what is the current scenario i thought let me just give you a brief introduction on the satellite systems itself so when we say satellite communication so we since uh, iot devices are basically communication devices right so we actually have information exchange between uh, like to and fro that is both transmit and receive so it's a communication network basically 
So satellite communication network uh, falls under three broad categories. One is actually what we call as a fixed satellite service. Uh, this is typically your uh, slightly higher bandwidth applications, which actually is used in terms of satellite broadband service or VSAT services, slightly lower data rate, but a two-way communicating equipments. So one of the like uh, frequency band part of it, I will just explain uh, a little after this, but uh, the nomenclature of C, K, K, U, K bands, uh, these are some of the bands that are actually used in these uh, uh, fixed satellite service. So now one thing is actually these bands actually mean that they are operating at uh, quite a high frequency, which means that uh, you will be going in for uh, much larger antennas, basically also because the uh, the losses in terms of propagations are very high and also the distances that the waves need to travel is quite high. So in order to compensate for those things, you need larger antennas, power amplifier blocks for your transmit and all. Then you, on the other hand, you have broadcast satellite services. These are uh, mainly receive only uh, kind of a devices. Uh, this one, the it's like popularly known as DTH, right? Direct to home service, like your uh, dish that you put on top of your house. Uh, so these are the other uh, satellite services, communication service that is actually used. And the other one is actually the mobile satellite services. So this is what is one of the uh, yeah, like mobile satellite service is what actually is something that is uh, making uh, IoT devices in the satellite space as actually uh, attractive, right? So in the case of mobile satellite service, we are talking about bands like UHF, L, S. These are the basic bands. Uh, less than three gigahertz, I would say, even not even up to the four gigahertz, but generally less than three gigahertz is uh, what we are looking at as uh, so, so being supported for the uh, mobile satellite services. So I just gave you a brief view of the uh, frequency band, uh, frequency range and the nomenclature in terms of the bands, what it is called. So you basically have 300 kilohertz up to one gigahertz referred to as the UHFs. Uh, there are actually quite a few uh, satellite-based uh, uh, services which are there in these UHFs as well. Then we have this 1 to 2 gigahertz, which is referred to as the L-band, and then 2 to 4 gigahertz referred to as the S-band. And we basically have C, which is 4 to 8, uh, X, KU, K and KA. So these are like, I just tried to highlight it. These are some of the significant satellite communication bands. Of course, there are much more bands than these also, uh, but uh, the ITU uh, uh, frequency allocation of frequencies also, if you look at uh, the satellite bands are more uh, focused towards these particular uh, frequency ranges and bands. Okay, so uh, I just thought I will just give you a brief uh, uh, peek into what exactly has been the ITU frequency band allocation for L and C. And so these are actually uh, region regional allocations as well. Uh, these are the guidelines that the ITU provides and a lot of like the whole world has been divided into multiple regions and each region uh, kind of decides which one they intend to keep for mobile or keep for satellite or whatever it is. So there are certain variations uh, from region to region on those particular allocations. So if you look at this, actually these uh, violet colored uh, bands or what actually are uh, related to uh, the satellite uh, related frequency bands. So as you see, uh, this is actually, I'm just focusing on L and C bands kind of thing. L and uh, S, I should say, sorry, this is a typo, it should have been L and S bands actually. So here, if you see 1525 to almost 1660, uh, this is one of the most sought of band as far as uh, the mobile satellite services are concerned. Similarly, there are bands between 1760 and 2200, uh, which are actually once again been reserved for uh, satellite, mobile satellite services actually. So, and I would uh, encourage you to actually check on the CKU, KA band for satellite spectrum allocations uh, for various countries. So you will see that actually a lot of uh, 
countries uh, do use ku and ka there are some like for example india specifically has lot of allocations on the c and uh, there has been lot of contention for usage of c band uh, between the mobile and uh, using it for satellite so there has been lot of movement uh, that actually the satellite whoever have been using c band for satellites are been asked to vacate and then make way for uh, actually mobile communications as such so uh, the ku ka are the other segments where actually typically as i said uh, where we just mentioned here uh, this is either used for broadcast based uh, broadband based services uh, wherein actually you have much higher so one of the advantages of actually going the going into higher frequencies is that you also get larger bandwidths there so larger bandwidths means larger data rates that you can actually support and uh, l and s bands and other things even though they support mobile satellite services uh, using uh, small uh, device form factors but the bandwidths is a huge challenge here so if you have devices in this segment we are basically saying that you need to pay more money for the bandwidths so one of the other thing that defines a satellite system is actually the orbit of operation right so basically <clears throat> traditionally the satellites have been operating in geo uh, which is called as the geo stationary earth orbit uh, the geo orbit is something like 35 36000 kilometers above the surface of the earth so why this particular uh, why this particular point of 36000 kilometer uh, basically that uh, a satellite launched in that particular orbit uh, looks stationary for a particular uh, point on the earth like covering a particular geographic area so it is actually moving around actually orbiting uh, on orbiting the earth almost at the same pace as which the earth is orbiting right so that way uh, the geo gives a stationary view of the satellite so this particular uh, thing has several advantages right one is actually as you can see it's the coverage part right since it's actually quite far off the coverage that this particular satellite provides is much much larger and also for the coverage that it gives it gives the view that the satellite is pretty stationary so this actually gives us lot of benefit in terms of a simpler uh, sim simple waveform uh, design and things like that uh, which can actually uh, translate to simple devices but there are other challenges in terms of the latency sorry the latency is being too high being at 36000 kilometers uh, when we say latency like for example a device transmitting to the say if a device transmitting something like a ping packet right so if i have to ping one uh, device like two devices on the earth so it's actually two times the route trip so actually a packet needs to go to the satellite come back to an earth station right ping to the device and then give the data back to the satellite and then get it back to the earth to the other device so that way we are talking almost the propagation from the uh, earth to the satellite back to the earth back to satellite and back to earth so it's almost like a uh, four throw kind of a thing in terms of uh, the propagation delays so that way the latencies are quite large nonetheless uh for the kind of iot devices where we are looking at uh this is pretty okay we are not so not really like uh having uh, uh, propagate like uh, latencies to the tune of 400 500 milliseconds are particularly okay if, if at all you are not using any critical uh, elements uh, like where the criticality of the data in terms of real time is not important you can definitely look at this option right so as i said the coverage is pretty wide so you, yeah, just with about three satellites you can actually have the coverage of the globe 99% coverage is there and for the view of this particular satellite you could potentially have your earth station installed on any particular area where the satellite is visible right and just one particular earth station backed with an internet actually is which is serves as a gateway is good enough for actually having all devices over this particular area actually being able to reach any point in the net 
on the globe that way so uh, technology readiness level it's a proven deployed technology these were the first set of satellites that was launched and actually uh, this is pretty much in vogue as we speak dth and all uses these geo satellites very very much actually and the cost to deploy yeah the cost the cost of the deployment here is uh, more in terms of the uh, cost of the satellite itself right because uh, these satellites are uh, quite a huge satellite uh, it has to be pushed all the way up to 36000 kilometers above the surface of the earth so the deployment cost of these particular satellites are like uh, more than the network part of things the cost of the satellite itself is what actually is going to be the expensive one here and also these satellites have uh, replacement cycles which are quite good about 15 years 10 to 15 years are typical life cycles of these particular satellites so if you have thought through the installation of these uh, like the feature set that needs to be provided through these satellites they serve a pretty good uh, duration for actually as its life cycle then we have the meos which is the medium earth orbits located approximately around 8000 kilometers and you have the leos which is the uh, very very promising uh, satellite uh, constellation that we are looking at is actually the uh, leos uh, these are like one of the main reason leos have become very popular is it gives you very low latencies approximately 50 milliseconds and the other part is actually the leo launches have become very cheap and you could actually launch as small a in nanosat and cubesat these are some of the satellites uh, which actually operate in the leo space so this is something which is of very high interest as far as iot systems are concerned and then of course we have the meo satellites uh, they provide much larger areas uh, there has been like compared to geo and the leo the meo work is not so very popular uh, there are very few companies who are actually working on the MEO space. Uh, one of the, uh, uh, this thing, what is it? Uh, one way actually people are looking at MEOs is also trying to link multiple LEOs together using a single MEO. That way actually you have what is known as an ISL, the inter-satellite link is some possibility that is uh, being explored as we speak. So uh, the other uh, things is actually, Leo uh, staying at around 500 to 1000 kilometers of, uh, above the surface of the earth sees much larger, smaller uh, coverage area, which means that in order to have a global coverage, what you need is thousands of satellites. I'm sure uh, Starlink is one of the very popular things that most of the people know about, right? So they are looking at launching a few thousands of satellites to give global broadband coverage actually so that's once again a leo satellite one of the major problem with reference to the leo is its life cycle right so one is actually it requires thousands of satellites and its lifespan is also just five to seven years so by the time you are completed your uh, uh, full coverage for like in terms of if you are looking at launching thousands of satellites by the time you have covered a few hundred it's already time to do a replacement for those particular satellites which already are more towards the end of life kind of a thing so that's that's what actually makes the leo as a constellation base that means if you want to do a constellation of leo satellites that's what makes it very expensive okay so these are the various system orbits in which actually the orbits in which actually the satellites get installed right now having done this now what's the satellite got to do with it right now what exactly does this like what is the architecture within the satellite that actually helps the communication part so typically there are uh, two network architectures that we uh, see in a satellite one is called as a bent pipe a bent pipe is basically it's like an rf translator what you see so anything that is beamed from an earth station goes to the satellite it gets converted to a different frequency for a device and then the device when actually the device is actually sending it it once again reaches the satellite translated to another frequency so essentially it is doing a frequency translation along with 
actually a uh, rf amplification as well so these are not actually i shouldn't say not intelligent satellites uh, i should i shouldn't be saying that they are definitely there but the thing is they don't do much processing beyond actually uh, having large antennas wherein actually they can get the signals and then once again amplify and then route it back to the other side right uh, this actually one of the main advantages of this is that you can keep most of your intelligence in the device and your earth station side if you are using a bent pipe architecture so that means that tomorrow if i am actually looking at like well, one of the uh, this is actually geo satellites are generally uh, this in nature right so today i am actually using uh, a particular uh, uh, baseband uh, waveform actually tomorrow i want to go to a better fec scheme a larger bandwidth or any other uh, advances uh, in technology that i want to actually get to right so with actually just a bent pipe architecture since my implementations are at my earth station and my device side i have the ability to actually uh, use the same satellite for actually advances in these particular technological areas so just a small nomenclature here anything from the earth station to the satellite are referred to as the out route and in route frequencies and anything from the satellite to the devices are referred to as the forward and return link frequencies so these particular uh, frequencies if you look at now uh, for an iot device say which is actually in l and s band so what actually happens is here the devices have uh, smaller dimensions so we are talking about very small devices small antenna low power devices and things like that so these devices actually work on narrow bandwidths and when they transmit the information to the satellite there are enough gain elements and things like that in the satellite and they actually down when they down convert and send it to the earth station typically the frequencies where the earth station operates are on the higher frequencies spectrum one is because the earth station can get a much larger bandwidth to see and also uh, the earth station can be made quite uh, like the complexity on the earth station Uh, can be uh, is not an issue because you you can afford to put in a much larger antenna uh, much higher power amplifiers and these kind of systems you can put on the earth station so the earth station's uh, uh, network can look pretty much complex and the devices which are going to be thousands and thousands in numbers can actually be kept simple so Uh, if you look at it the out route and in route operations could be in c or ka or ku kind of bands whereas the forward link and return links uh, for uh, iot systems are generally in your l or s band kind of a system so some of the examples are s cross c or c cross s cross c and c cross s uh, networks l cross k and k cross l kind of a networks so this is uh, what we refer to as a bent pipe architecture very prevalent in uh, geo satellites so the other is actually the regenerative satellites so the regenerative satellites is actually this is something which is uh, very very uh, like uh, popular on the uh, leo space now in the regenerative satellite actually uh, it's no longer uh, a bent pipe architecture that means it's not just translating the frequency uh, but it also has enough compute and some amount of storage as part of the system right and uh, the reason why some of these is also possible is with advancement in technologies wherein actually you have really uh, uh, fat fpgas like the zinc ultra scale ultra scale plus and things like that which can uh, basically do lot of signal processing plus uh, uh, data oriented uh, processing also as part of the systems so why exactly it's important uh, as we said uh, leo satellites actually just do passes like for example say today when i start i may not be into an uh, thousands of uh, devices thousands of satellites out there in the constellation right so we begin small with telling say i have 15 satellites 20 satellites so when you have such kind of a thing uh, so a given point on the earth 
actually uh, has passes of the satellite right so the satellite comes into view probably for 5 minutes 10 minutes maybe twice a day thrice a day kind of a thing and now the satellite going passing you you don't have earth infrastructure elements uh, everywhere along the route right so uh, generally they see uh, the uh, op, uh, the orbit actually in which these leos are launched and they see, find out what is the maximum passes on a particular geography it can do right like for example in uh, some of the towards the pole kind of a thing actually these satellites if if it is actually an elliptical orbit satellite these satellites actually give you much more passes so uh, the earth stations are generally located at those places so what exactly it is done what is the thing done here is actually whenever a device transmits the satellite actually does capture the signal do the digital like get it into a, the uh, data form store it and then when it does a pass over the earth station it dumps the data so once again there also if you look at it the out routes and the in route frequencies are generally on the higher frequency side and the forward and return return link frequencies which the device needs to see will probably be on the c or l kind of a segment so that way actually the regenerative satellites are more like store and forward satellites actually because they need to actually dump the data as it approaches the earth station with a certain fatter pipe of uh, or a fatter pipe or a large uh, uh, bandwidth communication whereas device side communications still happen as a narrow band communication so this is actually uh, these are the various uh, network architectures of course uh, uh, there is uh, some interesting work going on in the space of uh, leos also as a bent pipe architecture okay so that's something that is uh, in the works as we speak and uh, so if you are in a regenerative satellite mode uh, then what happens is uh, you don't have real time you do, you can't have any real time uh, reliability on the data right because it's a store and forward so whenever the satellite passes you it ca- captures the data or delivers the data similarly it passes over the earth station it uh, dumps the data and collects the data whatever is meant for devices so if it's a bent pipe you have more real time availability of the data whereas with store and forward you don't have that particular uh, advantage so leo satellites with a bent pipe have advantages but once again to actually have a real time nature of things all the satellites like if you are having a constellation of satellites all the satellites should have linkages between them or across them right so then only actually a real time behavior can be foreseen so these are the two network device architecture network architecture for the satellite so of course like yeah we have looked at some of these things already um, between geo and leo what should be the ideal choice of architecture for the satellite iot so some of the advantages and disadvantages i just put it out so in the geo satellite space you have real time data 24 cross coverage given a particular point in the point on the earth if the satellite is visible for that particular area you have almost 24 cross 7 coverage it has pretty much wide coverage large life span of the satellite on the disadvantages side yeah the transmission loss like the since the signal has to go uh, really long distances of about 30 35000 kilometers you have large path losses uh so which with large path losses that means that you need to have really highly sensitive uh, sensitivity should be really high on your receiver segment similarly for your transmit side also it requires high power which means that you it's quite difficult to achieve very compact designs that means that compact design both in terms of power and in terms of uh, form factor right so these are some of the challenges when you look at the geo satellites cost of the launches are expensive because the satellites are basically very big antenna pointing challenges if you are using very high frequencies like ka ku and all uh, you were uh, you need to actually have your antenna uh, pointed towards the, like pointed towards the satellite for the best possible 
reception and transmission. Leo, if you look at Leo, since they are much, much closer to the Earth, 500 to 1000 kilometers away, uh, you can live with a low power TX and a good sensitivity on the receive uh, can be expected. Compact designs are made possible. And uh, of late, actually, uh, Nano and CubeSat uh, launches have become a commodity business, right? So now we have even heard people telling that uh, a student from a college la launched their own Nano satellite kind of a thing and all. So basically, the thing is, uh, whatever requires to actually build up this particular Nano Sat or a CubeSat, the most of the infrastructure has been pretty standard now. Only thing that changes is your payload. Right. So that way, actually, the cost of this has become more like like an assembly line kind of a thing is what actually is making this possible. And that's also the reason why uh, people are telling that they are no longer talking about Leo launch as in one or two satellites. They say, OK, we will launch a constellation of satellites. So, of course, there is a other uh, this thing short. OK, oh, so the short lifespan and frequent relaunch is required as far as the Leos are concerned. So I did speak about the real-time data it will require an ISI, ISL, which is much like a router in the sky. So basically, the satellite needs to route the data to other satellites, which actually has coverage over the Earth station, if you want real-time availability. So they are typically store and forward networks, regenerative satellites. And uh, this one, one of the other problems with LEO is since it doesn't pass over the given area, that means they're like it's a time variant communication channel, which means that your uh, waveform part should be much, much complex, actually. So apart from deciding whether it's a LEO or a GEO for actually a SAT IoT, the other things which play a major role are UHF, LC, which is actually the band of operation. And now, there has been a lot of uh, technological advances in KU and KA, especially on the uh, antenna design aspects, which have made brought in even KU and KA into the ambit of uh, satellite IoT devices. Actually, I think I'm okay. So, what exactly is the satellite IoT network like? how we looked at actually the terrestrial IoT network, what it, is, what it does comprise of. In terms of satellite IoT network, we are once again looking at sensors and devices, which is like the IoT edge device. And then you basically have the satellite itself and an earth station. And then of course the network server and the app server are something which are, which are uh, as uh, same as that of your terrestrial networks. So this is what actually comprises of a satellite IoT network. Another interesting part actually is one at one particular area, what we see is actually uh, terrestrial IoT networks brings it certain advantages already in terms of lower costs and things like that, uh, but smaller coverage. Satellite IoT network brings, it, brings with it the advantages that it has much larger coverage. So I, a good deployment scenario, what I see is actually a hybrid, hybrid kind of a translation, right? So basically, you have closely uh, cl cl uh, devices which uh, need to be, uh, which can be placed close to each other, are actually networked in a terrestrial way. And then they are backbone via gateways, which are in turn satellite IoT devices. So that way you have a mix of hybrid, uh, like hybrid uh, way of actually terrestrial and satellite IoT networks working in tandem to actually give you the advantages of low cost as well as uh, coverage. So this is one of the, this will more or less be the way forward uh, as far as I see. Where you have extreme, like there is something called as an FSS, like it's uh, quite pretty similar to what we call as a fixed satellite service kind of a thing. I'll just show one more slide where actually we see that uh, a combination of uh, terrestrial land sat works uh, best in such cases. So this is uh, an illustration of actually, uh, like for example, SOTA or FOTA, what we call, 
this is a software over the air upgrade or firmware over the air upgrade right so in this particular scheme of things if you look at if you have a basically a cellular like a let's say like with the recent advancements wherein actually cars needing a software upgrade or a firmware upgrade kind of a thing so now for a particular manufacturer if he has uh, hundreds of thousands of cars for which actually a firmware upgrade is required those particular uh, cars which in which are within the cellular network can actually get upgraded using the cellular technology right so another technology which sankhya has been working on uh, which is called as a brh which is called which is a broadcast radio head uh, which is like uh, cellular is more like one to one kind of a thing and brh is what we are terming in terms of uh, being able to do a broadcast so this is the other area wherein within the ambit of the brh if there are multiple devices you have a broadcast based firmware upgrade and now the other option is actually using the satellite itself for such photo or sota wherein the device is not in the range of a cellular network or a broadcast network which is typically the case for actually cars which are on the move and all right so such uh, devices can actually be uh, addressed as in through satellite so once again satellite much larger cover area broadcast works best dth is a very uh, good example for that much larger area one satellite covering the entire area uh, same spectrum going to several devices so that's actually one of the advantages so this way actually if you look at it a hybrid network actually gives a big advantage on that so and of course this is another like as i said a hybrid network wherein you have a satellite gateway and you have things which are uh, lora based or nbiot based devices which are actually several devices connected to a lora gateway which in turn will backhaul it to a satellite gateway which will beam it to the satellite for internet backhaul so i'll just uh, i think i'm running low on time i'll just quickly go through this so some of the technological advances in satellite iot realization uh, on the device side we see a uh, lot of uh, silicon integration happening in terms of the rf baseband application processor this is what is going to reduce uh, the footprint of the device then you have new antenna designs uh, low cost ra patch antennas for actually l and s bands and electronic beam steering antennas for ku and ka so our connectivity standards are improving uh, there has been a uh, lot of uh, waveforms for massive iot being de developed and uh, are enhancements of terrestrial iot waveforms to satellite so on the satellite side there are things like ground based beam forming uh, this is also something which actually gives you lot more beams on the satellite so that each device can actually work on much lower power and uh, leo launches are becoming cheaper uh, and then as i mentioned about the beam forming array antennas on the satellite also is something which is coming very pro prominently earth station side uh, moving also towards a 5g oran kind of an architecture wherein most of the uh, so processing is done on uh, server standard servers actually and some of the other thing is like there has been lot of ntn initiatives within 3gpp till now uh, so satellites have been actually an independently going uh, standardization uh now with the 3gpp ntn initiative we are seeing uh, more amount of uh, focus in getting the satellite as well as uh, uh, cellular on the same track so just a couple of examples where in sankhya's iot deployment we are working on the vessel tracking system for the department of fisheries for actually interlink like uh, being able to provide uh, an, tracking terminals on boats which are deep in the sea and this is another deployment sankhya did for actually the indian railways uh, wherein more than 3000 satellite based devices were actually installed on locomotives for real time tracking so some further interesting reads what i saw high sky astrocast astrocast and kepler ast and science and iot this is something that people can just have a look at if there is continued interest on the satellite iot space
okay so that's it from my side so time permitting maybe i can just take in some questions yeah thank you thank you mr sunil i think this was a very engaging talk with uh, lot of uh, you know good insight uh, starting from the architecture to the devices uh, yeah. i see one question yes uh, from omkar are advantages of satellite iot only limited to higher coverage area over terrestrial yeah one of the key reasons why you would want is basically that uh, because uh, when you look at agriculture and industrial iot's like the solar farms or the wind farms and things like that nobody is going to set up uh, uh, structures only for machine to machine communication or iot devices right so in dense urban areas you are getting it free because people are like the operators are already putting in towers and things like that in place to actually uh, cater to that the arpu or revenue per user point of view is pretty uh, good there uh, and this is like whatever they can salvage from uh, whatever is left over bandwidth uh, from their uh, overall usage right so that way uh, definitely Uh, covering those particular areas wherein actually operators are not going to invest on these technologies will be the reason why satellite iot's will thrive thank you thank you mr sunil i see another question uh, what modulation scheme prefer is preferred for device to satellite communication so yeah uh, once again uh, based on like uh, till now things have been more uh, what you call uh, very custom waveform parts of things that are being used right uh, it's uh, there is nothing like one fits all kind of a thing uh, depending on what exactly are the link budgets uh, and link margins that are available there and the amount of bandwidths that are available in the system right so depending on that actually waveform uh, designs can be looked at so very narrow band waveforms are actually used uh, like whatever we have used in our deployments uh, there have been lot of uh, deployments which actually uses dss uh, digital spread spectrum techniques are being used uh, so th these are some of the very commonly used uh, waveforms yeah of course uh, there are like, uh, like i did mention about something called as mioty which is actually from is franofer they it's also a terrestrial waveform which is currently being adapted even for uh, satellite communication similarly nbiot is also pretty pretty much uh, there is lot of work on nbiot to adapt it to satellite thank you uh, i see one thank question you. on satellite but i think this was probably already covered in your uh, thing so i think uh, we can probably in the interest of time we can probably close the session i believe and and they have one question uh, can i yeah, ask but sorry yeah uh, yeah uh, uh, this is a very interesting uh, talk thank you for that uh, my question is uh, see there is uh, always infrastructure cost correct Whether you are going to make it lora based which is terrestrial based or satellite based in the terrestrial based you are going to in, uh, invest in having the various base station and gateways to so i mean uh, to cover a certain area and at the same time in the case of satellite you are going to invest in the satellites correct so uh, this always uh, uh, from business model point of view which one you think it is like uh, assuming a same number of user per uh, square kilometer area mm -hmm. one will be a better business model in terms of investment like for a company um, see one one aspect about satellite which differs from terrestrial which probably i should have touched upon is also that actually uh, terrestrial being more standards focused right so there are people who are working exclusively exclusively on the devices okay so actually the operators are different the device manufacturer or device uh, device supplier is different right and the operator is just uh, involved in actually uh, commercializing that particular path whereas actually when you look at satellites actually as long as we don't move towards a common base in terms of standard adaptation uh, for that right the onus of actually infrastructure the onus of being an operator the onus of actually supplying the devices everything rests with the satellite right 
that's one of the primary challenges that i see for actually the satellite technology to actually gain prominence like the way terrestrials is so in terms of cost comparison that's what it makes it very difficult because it's not like uh, you don't you are not seeing people uh, segregating their work telling that okay i am going to work on the devices part so my uh, this thing is on the device i would strongly recommend you look at ast and science uh, they are doing some pioneer pioneering things uh, on doing like your normal cell phone should be talk, able to talk over the satellite kind of a technology so they are actually if you look at it they are doing spending humongous amount of money is on actually coming up with the next generation satellites but nonetheless when you look at that you still need some amount of changes as far as the handsets are also concerned so who will address that means once again they are supposed to be everything then right they are supposed to be satellite they are supposed to be the ground equipment everything they have to take care i think that's one area if uh, we get to standardize things i think maybe we will stand at an advantage that even satellite iot will have uh, proliferation better than probably the terrestrial ones also did i answer it because Thank yeah you. in yeah. terms of monetary sense i don't have a number off hand to say which is better but i could qualitatively say uh, this much yeah the cloud and probably comes closest to that i mean in terms of if you want to make it a standard based uh, commercial Correct. operation see the one to my uh, this thing cloud ran is something which is of interest even to the operators because they feel that uh, they also can contribute to their network in a better way because it's uh, more like i can, i can do th things are more under my control kind of a thing because based on standard servers and the standard being pretty well defined right to the level of blocks and interfaces and things like that as long as the guy who is actually adopting the uh, ran tech or ran technology if they are actually following the same specification then uh, mm -hmm. every uh, operator feels that uh, there is a positive impact that he himself can make uh, by means of involving himself on the network operations so something similar could potentially happen here yeah okay thank you yeah okay uh, um, in the interest of time uh, we'll probably close the session now and if you have more questions please do write to us we'll try to get the answer from the speaker and please provide your feedback uh, to us uh, about uh, that we can use it for our arranging the future talks and uh, uh, we would like to uh, thank Sunil. Uh, thanks a lot, Sunil, for sharing us with all the domain yeah, knowledge yeah. that you have over a long period of time. Yeah. And uh, Chengappa, over to you, please. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gana, sir. Um, essentially, uh, after uh, going through this talk, right, so uh, what at least like I have inferred is satellites have uh, unique advantages uh, to connect IoT devices. Uh, offering truly ubiquitous coverage, uh, which can reach the objects uh, with limited or no access to terrestrial networks. On behalf of IEEE Comsoc Bangalore chapter, I would like to express our profound gratitude uh, to Mr. Sunil HR, uh, VP Technology and Solutions, Sankhya Labs, uh, for walking us through the nitty gritties of satellite and IoT systems, uh, providing bird's eye view of the differences between uh, Geo, Mio, and Leo satellites sharing insights into satellite network architecture, uh, pen pipe architecture, uh, regenerative architecture, and how, how these things play an important role in GEO and LEO satellites. Uh, and also talking out how on route, in route, forward link, return link operates, um, and also giving the insights on choice of architecture for SAT IoT. Also emphasizing on band of operation of the devices in terms of UHF, L, and C and also advances in antenna design technology, uh, which has even made uh, KU and KA band uh, usable for IoT. Uh, essentially, uh, uh, bringing out the differences between uh, hybrid terrestrial uh, and SAT IoT networks, and how these two network architecture can essentially uh, work in tandem uh, would, would uh, pave the way forward for uh, many more uh, interesting innovations. Uh, and at the same time, I would also like to thank all the participants who have joined us. And uh, it is overwhelming to see that we have close to 100 participants who have joined us on this Saturday evening. 
uh, in staying with us for almost full session, which in itself in, uh, is uh, probably like providing insights to how relevant the topic is and how interesting our speaker made it for them. Uh, we have also given the feedback link on the chat uh, window, so it would be helpful for us uh, if you can share your feedback uh, so that we can come up with much more uh, insights and uh, technical sessions going forward. And also, please do subscribe to our uh, Comsoft YouTube Bangalore uh, ch uh, channel, uh, where we would be uh, like posting uh, such useful technical talks to uh, all the te uh, technical enthusiasts. With this, uh, we would call it a day. And until we meet again, uh, stay safe and keep learning. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thank you for providing a opportunity for me as well as to present this. Thank. Thanks very much. It's it's, it's our pleasure, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you.